So good evening, everyone. Hope you all are doing well in today's session, which is my lecture number 99 of my lecture series. We are going to talk about the new medications for albuminuria. In this particular session, which is a very important session for clinical practice as well as for the endocrinology exams, we are going to cover the new medications for the treatment of diabetic and non-diabetic chronic kidney disease. And we are going to do some case-based scenarios for application of this in clinical practice. I will also be talking about the NICE guidance, which was published a year ago for use of Finrenone in diabetic chronic kidney disease. We'll be looking in detail for the data supporting this guidance, like we'll be looking into the different trials like Fidelio DKD, Figaro DKD and Confidence Trials, which was just published very recently. I will be also discussing in this session the NICE guidelines on chronic kidney disease and diabetic kidney disease, which is the NG203 published a year ago. And also going to go through uh, in a brief overview, the UK Kidney Association guidelines and the Association of British Clinical Diabetologists guidelines for chronic kidney disease related to diabetes. So a very important session for exam purposes as well as clinical practice. So now let's first look at the latest updates on the newest medications uh, which are helpful for treating our patients with uh, diabetic and non-diabetic chronic kidney disease. Looking first at fenrenanone, so so far approved as a non-steroidal mineralocortical receptor antagonist, reduces inflammation and fibrosis. So far, of course, the approval is for diabetic chronic kidney disease, but there are also now data uh, supporting uh, its use uh, in non-diabetic chronic kidney disease as well. Then we have tirzepatide, which is a GIP plus GLP-1 agonist, a dual agonist. Again, it's approved for weight loss plus renal benefit. We have the upcoming retatutide, which is a triple agonist of GIP, GLP-1 and glucagon. It's currently in phase two. It definitely has potent metabolic benefits. Then we have sparsentan, which is an endothelin uh, type A plus ARB dual blocker. This is currently approved in IgA nephropathy. Trials in diabetic nephropathy are ongoing. Then we have some very interesting combinations coming up. I'm going to look and discuss with you with some more combinations which are coming up in the future. One of them is Zebo Tentan plus Dabagliflozin. There are some other combinations I'll be discussing in the next section of slides. This is nothing but an uh, endothelin receptor uh, antagonist plus NSGLT2 inhibitor combination. It's currently in phase two and phase three. It has additive effects in the treatment of our uh, diabetic and albuminuric patient. Then we have Bardoxolon. This is an NRF2 activator. This was paused due to safety concerns. We have Pentoxifilin, which is an anti-inflammatory. This is currently off-label. It is cost-effective and has modest benefit. Then there is Silon Sertib, which is an ESK1 inhibitor, which is nothing but an apoptosis signaling kinase 1 inhibitor. This was stalled due to poor outcomes in phase 3. Then we have galactin 3 inhibitors, which is anti -fibrotic. It is still in the early preclinical phase. So these are some newest or the next generation medications for uh, patients of albuminuria and helpful for treating our patients with diabetic kidney disease, looking beyond ACE inhibitor, ARB, or an SGLT2 inhibitor. So case scenario uh, number one for this regards is using fenrenone in chronic kidney disease and type 2 diabetic patients. We have Mr. Ahmed, he's 62 year old, type 2 diabetic, diagnosed 12 years ago, hypertensive, dyslipidemic, BMI of 30. Current medications include uh, metformin, which is 1000 milligram twice a day, empagliflozin, which is 10 mg uh, once a day, ramipril, which is 10 mg once a day, amlodipine and atervostatin. Uh, this patient has the following lab results, HbA1c of 7.4%, uh, EGFR of 42, which has dropped from the 55 at the baseline six months ago, urine albumin creatine ratio at 450 milligram per gram, albuminuria of more than 300 is definitely uh, significant uh, milligram per gram, then serum potassium of 4.7 and blood pressure of 128 by 76.
So despite good blood pressure and glycemic control on ACE inhibitor and SGLT2 inhibitor, this patient has got progressive chronic kidney disease with persistent albuminuria. So what additional therapy can be considered? Of course, phenidone. Why? Because it is indicated in type 2 diabetic patients with CKD, where the patient's AGFR should be more than or equal to 25 and the albuminuria level at more than or equal to 30 mg per gram. And those who are on maximally tolerated dose of already ACE inhibitor or ARB. Fidelio diabetic kidney disease trials and Figaro diabetic kidney disease trial show decreased progression of the chronic kidney disease and decrease in the cardiovascular outcomes. Additive effect is seen to SGLT2 inhibitors in real world and post hoc trial data. Check serum potassium at the baseline and EGFR. If potassium is less than or equal to 4.8 and EGFR is more than or equal to 25, we can start with 10 mg of fendonon. Monitor potassium regularly, baseline, four weeks, and periodically thereafter. We can go up for the dose from 10 mg to 20 mg once a day. So some teaching points to keep in mind with this case scenario, ACE inhibitor, ARB plus SGLT2 inhibitor, adding a fendronor will give us the best renal and cardiovascular protection in our type 2 diabetic patients who are having chronic kidney disease. We should make sure we ensure potassium monitoring to avoid hyperkalemia. Fendronor is better tolerated than spironolactone regarding the endocrine side effects. Next part of this session is the NICE guidance, which was published a year ago, which is TA-877 for the fendonone in diabetic chronic kidney disease patient. I'm going to go through the recommendation first. Then we'll look at the trials more in detail for Figaro, Fidelio, as well as we are going to look at the recently published confidence trial, which then gives us the confidence to uh, prescribe uh, fendonone alongside SGLT2 inhibitors, alongside ACE inhibitor and ARB. So it is a very important trial published very recently. I'm going to go through this recommendation, but at the moment, this is also the end of my free view. Now, further in this session, I have discussed the trials in detail. I've also gone through the uh, UK Kidney Association and the NICE guidelines for diabetic chronic kidney disease. If you like access to my full session, please subscribe to my lecture series. Uh, there is a one-time subscription fees with which you can gain access to my existing 99 lectures, plus all my lectures forthcoming in the coming weeks. One of my lectures which are coming in the uh, next following week is my lecture number 100 of my lecture series. And here I'm going to talk about the role of artificial intelligence in thyroid nodule evaluation. Again, a very hot topic and I hope you'll benefit from it. Thank you so much.